Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Not Your Asian Women podcast. I'm not sure where to look here. That one. Hi. Okay. <laughs> Today, we are recording from Shining's new studio in her house. Look at this. Look at this mushroom. What is this? Some uh, trippy shit. I got it. Uh, Timu. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get asked for them. Cheap as fuck. Is, is Timu a Chinese brand? Yeah. It's supposed to glow <laughs> at, uh, in the dark, but you know what I'm saying? You get what you pay for. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is true. Yeah, all those ads, like when people get tricked by them, I'm like, you're buying a gown for $20. What do you expect is going to arrive in the mail? Maybe we know because, I mean, you're from China. Like, you've yeah. seen you've seen yeah. enough. If it's too good to be true. Uh, I haven't seen you in, like, a couple months, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've been doing uh, shows and all that. Oh, yeah. I went through a really bad phase. Like, dark. I almost dark, very dark. And I almost wanted to give up everything. You know what helped me? Mushroom trip. <laughs> <laughs> did you go microdose or you went full like trip? uh not full on but um i'd say like in the middle okay. i did uh have uh mm -hmm. i did see like uh, shapes and and then like it's a different like a dimension or something like that oh okay yeah, yeah so you saw things yeah i saw things it's, it's almost like a i don't even know how to explain it it's like uh, I almost have like a near death experience. I've never taken enough. I I, I love microdosing. I I'm new to it, but I'll take. I have these little gummies, and it's like point something of a milligram uh, each, so you, you can control. I'm like I'm. I'll take one, two, three, and I feel like a little more loose, and I like warm, it. Warm, yeah. I like it a lot. Yeah, I I did microdosing, but um, a, I wanted to see how. Like the experiences with, you know, not full on. So I took uh, more than the suggested microdosing cubes. And then I had, uh, oof, it was a trip. It was a trip. Okay, so for, <laughs> so for people, anyone who has never done any type of psilocybin journey, what exactly does it do? Um, it... Hmm. It, it it took me to a really dark place, even darker. It's than even you darker. Were yeah, it's sober. it's a it's not thoughts. It's more of like a feelings. It I felt, I like a, a in my in my mind, there was like a dark cloud or entity or something. It's almost like a octopus shape, giant octopus or something. Like was trying to grab me down like hold me down did you feel suffocated yes i did did and you then, physically try to what do you do no in that scenario? i knew like I, I i have pretty good uh conscious and i i know this is like a mushroom trip okay so, so you're conscious that you're on yeah i'm mushrooms. tripping yeah it's it is scary but then uh i knew that this is maybe the journey because i've heard many podcasts talk about it uh, that don't fight it mm -hmm. breathe, don't resist breathe, breathe and then just let let it uh like per, i think for for people that are usually pretty open-minded about it i say go ahead and then try it but for people who have not done any type of uh you know drugs or you know all that i don't advise because it, it, it you can freak you out and then for people who are prone to like the, you know, deep end of uh, mental problems, it can take you to, you know, like uh, psychotic breaks that had happened before. Or people call 911 because they think they're dying. Oh, I see. So, yeah, I, it's not something that, you know. That's what I've heard yeah. is you feel like you're dying. Yeah. But from a health, like a person who's mentally stable, they say it's in a good way. In a good way. It's, yeah, if it is a, like if a, you're in a healthy yeah, headspace. It, yeah, it's like a, like, it, it is like an ego trip. If you could just ride it and then, you know what's funny? I was, I was in a, that really dark uh, face and it lasted very long. I, at least I felt it lasted very long. And then I almost wanted to give up, like give up pursuing comedy and doing things because it's just so hard. 
so hard. You chose one of the hardest professions. Oh um, yeah, it just it, yeah. And then um, it's I I don't want, like I'm not super religious or anything like that. And then in that dark place, my phone starts to ring, just text messages from random not random people like people I've not talked to in a very long time just reaching out and saying that oh I saw your your you know your recent video or you know uh your your pod or something it's really funny keep doing to keep doing it and then um it, like one of the greatest comedians I look up to uh just randomly sent like a, a dm and then just reaching out, say, oh, how are you doing? Hope you're, you know, doing great. Don't give up. And then it, it just like, I, I know like people who are atheists are like, this is just coincidence. It, when you have that trip and this happens, it's like, oh, shit, is this a fucking sign or something? Everything's connected. Yes, everything's connected. It's like there's a God or some shit. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Like, I'm going to just appreciate whatever this is i'm not gonna read too much into it and then just see this as my uh it's almost like a what you call it uh uh life uh jacket or something when you're when you're drowning in the uh water this thing of a life preserver yeah something like that so i'm just gonna uh see these signs as oh it's my uh it's it it's a my uh, lifesaver or something that I need to uh, like uh, try again and not fall into the darkness. And then so like immediately when I saw those messages, I kind of just like, I, I start sobbing. Wait, is this when you're on the mushrooms? Yeah, mushrooms. Oh, so you weren't really getting the messages or you were? No, I were. <laughs> <laughs> I was. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was really getting the messages. <laughs> <laughs> not in my imagination <laughs> yeah and then yeah. it's so i was like and then i almost uh woke me up uh from you know the darkness of this like a uh, trip back into reality of oh shit there are people who like me there are people who love me support me and then want me to keep going so it helped me to get out of my head that's the thing. That's usually when I'm down, it's because I am I feel disconnected yeah. and I'm just in my own head. And yes, we should all build confidence that, you know, not need external validation. However, if you listen to our podcast, it feels so good to know we're not speaking into like nothing. Sometimes I'm just like, well, who am I talking to here? I'm present with you. But sometimes I wonder, I'm like, is anyone like listening to this? And someone came up to me at an event the other day and said, I listened to your podcast when I'm getting ready. I really like you and Shining that you, it's just very authentic and direct. I said, thank you so much. Yeah. So please validate our work. <laughs> it, it, really, it, it, it does help. It does the impact that you can make. Mm -hmm. I think most people we can forget the impact that we have on others. You doing your comedy, I think wanting to make other people laugh is such a gift. Mm. You know, like life can be hard, like these days, right? Like life can, we can get, we can feel down. So for me, that's why I like hanging out with you. I'm like, can I just fucking laugh <laughs> for a minute? Yeah. And yeah. You know, I feel so serious all the time. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely like um helped me to get out of my head and then to think oh it doesn't like to focus on what i what i ha do have and not uh what i'm trying to get but so hard to get because i get um the the whole i guess the whole reason it uh, i got into a really dark place was because i just couldn't help compare myself I just, I know it's, very it's natural. Yeah. It, I, I, Social media, to, it's hard not to do that. Exactly. And then, uh, and then I wanted, I didn't know what uh, comedy is going to take me. This is a very hard path. And I've talked to people that have, I guess, made it are still very sad because they've sacrificed their relationship intimate relationships and then uh you know with friends or romantic partner 
uh, or just with uh, kids and stuff. And now they just, you know, uh, alcoholic or, you know, using drugs to, over, you know, overmatch that pain. And it made me feel, oh, is this how, is this the only way to get success in comedy? You have to sacrifice some shit and to, to get what, where you want to be. And then I question, I don't want to sacrifice any of my relationships. Like, am I going to, before, like, I, I think about what's the most important thing? Like, uh, before my, uh, on my deathbed, am I going to think about, oh, shit, I should have done more shows. I should have done more mics. I should have done this theater, that theater. I should have worked harder. I don't think so. So I started to uh, take kind of take a little break from it and uh, uh, reached out to my uh, close friends and then just hang out and bullshit because I've been putting that off because I feel like, oh, this is not helping me with my goal for for the, for a long time. Um, I knew what I was wanted to pursue. So anything that doesn't help me to get there, I pushed away. That means, you know, like connecting with friends. I do that all the time, right? Yeah. So <laughs> it's like tunnel vision with goals. Exactly. And then, but then it didn't make me happy. And then I was like, what am I doing? And, and then I, uh, yeah, and just stopped. And then that kind of helped a little bit because you do need life. You do need fun. Other pain struggles to, to have to talk about shit for comedy so yeah yeah connection for all the times because i'm a vo the avoidant type i go like inward and i usually know that's actually the time that i even if i don't want to that's the time i actually need to call my friends for me um that's not an issue i've I'm always pretty uh loud about oh like i love you i miss you let's hang out uh, uh something like that like reaching out for help or show vulnerability, openness is very easy for me. So that I'm very grateful for. And the, the thing is, like, I just need to get out of my own head and not put that much pressure on myself. Like, even if I guess I don't make it, you know, even people say, I don't care. Like, oh, you've been lazy or something. You'll never make it in comedy if you don't try mics every day. Then I don't fuck it. It's not like I need it. Look at this rum. <laughs> Some ego talk again. <laughs> Ego's back. Ego's back. You need a little bit of ego. Oh my God, speaking of ego, I did this. Oh, com nothing combos you like comedy. It, it, I cannot imagine <sighs> nothing a humbles joke you. and having the room be cricket. <laughs> yeah, like I, um, I did a show. It was the first time in my life I was begging for money. The producer asked, uh, give me the tip jar and asked me to walk around and ask for tips. You know who I am. Damn, son, I have never worked for money. You, <laughs> What the fuck? In my brain, like my ego starts saying, do you know who the fuck I am? <laughs> Wait, he wants money to go to you or for just for, for everybody? Oh, it's just okay, it's, it's like just part of it. It's it, when you do comedy, it's just. You have to do it. Everybody has to do it. That's that's now like you know like I I sit on it and I <laughs> the next day I'm like you know what this is kind of what I love about it. It checks your ego and it doesn't matter who you are. Are you funny? So that's yeah. And then it, and everybody is doing their part. And so I walked around. I was like really just awkward. I'm like I don't know how to do this. I'm like. <laughs> I hope you have fun. <laughs> and then, yeah, uh, it, it's just like a, a 15 bucks for, a, for every comedian that performed and I give it back to the bartender. That's what um, one of the good advice that other uh, great comedians have said, uh, treat staff really well. Bartender, uh, waitress, waiters, and yeah, treat them really well. So... I mean, it's not like, you know, I'm not, I'm not like bragging or something like that. I mean, $15, it's, it's, it is money. It's somebody's hard earned money. To get people to give you money <laughs> yeah. is difficult. You think you have all these good ideas. I'm going to sell this online course. People are going to buy it. Yeah. To get them to click 
and pay Ooh. or hand you money yeah. is di- it's very difficult. Yeah. So yeah, I just uh give it back to the bartender. But yeah, and that was uh that was the first time my my ego got checked by comedy. Well, besides, you know, on stage nobody laughing. Um but it was good experience. It it, it humbled me. It, it it made me value work. And then everybody has to do their part. Like, it, yeah, you're not above work. I yeah. love that because yeah. one of my pet peeves these days is people who are entitled, which is, there's a lot <laughs> these days. So I think everyone can use some humbling. I understand we all have our moments and you get caught up. But to think that you're above or better than someone, I Oh God, I cannot stand it. And I think I'm attracting more of it because maybe the videos just happen to come through my algorithm that kind of, uh, you know, prove to me that like, see, <laughs> see, this is what people are doing. They're so entitled. Um, but I didn't, I, I have noticed that it's been a big trigger for me that I think everyone, and it's for me keeping it in mind for myself too, you know, to stay humble. Yeah. P and I, I actually, we got in a, argument like a fight with a guy at a dog park recently and it's usually it's not like me at all normally I don't say anything you know I'm like you do you and you leave but I think things have been building up so much that I'm like people need to be called out on their poor behavior what happened basically he so his dog little dog was humping mine for like 20 minutes normally i don't say anything because that's what you know dogs do for 20 minutes 20 minutes is a <laughs> you long you didn't say time. nothing yeah yeah and you that's know that's more than average men <laughs> <laughs> but his dog was not neutered mm-hmm. the whole dick was out and like it's wet and stuff so it's a little gross <laughs> and you know bobo's trying to like squirm it off and bark but his dog just was not trained and his attitude the body language of the owner, you could just tell he was super entitled. Older man. He's just like reading his newspaper there. And then, you know, normally I'm like, like dogs are like kids, like give them a chance to work it out. Normally they work it out better than you can work it out for them. So I'm trying to be fair. That's like one of my values is like, okay, let's be fair. And then other people are watching what's going on. And, you know, it's literally been 20 minutes and he doesn't even look up. And then she said, you know, if if that bothers you, it's fair to ask, you know, like, hey, can you get your dog? Can you grab your dog mm-hmm. off? She's like, I'm just going to give you a heads up, though. I come here a lot and he does, too. And he's a dick. So I'm just like, OK, and we're getting ready to leave. And I'm like, there's been so many instances where I thought to myself, like, oh, man, I should have said something, you know. And so I'm like, I need to say something. And so I asked nicely. I said, hey you know, your dog's been humping mine this entire time. Like, would you mind grabbing him? And he says, like, my dog's smaller than yours. He's not harming it or anything. So, like, they're dogs. That's what they do. Completely dismissive. Mm. Pissed me off so much. And I said, okay, I'm like, well, as a responsible pet owner, I'm responsible for my dog. And you are you should be responsible for yours if you're a responsible pet owner. And he basically just said no. He's like... He's like, you know, not everyone's like you who's going to pick their dog up and, you know, it's it's completely harmless. He's like, he's going to get neutered next week, $2,500. He started talking about money. Yeah, like this, is, this was a type of person, like Argyle sweater, like, oh my mm. God, such a fucking douche. And then I was like, well, maybe in the meantime, like he shouldn't be at the park then because he's not training. Obviously, he's really horny, you know, he's going to want to like fuck anything. And then he's like, I live right across the street and I can come anytime that I want. I, I know other people have said shit because I didn't tell him to let, like leave, you know, he's like, I can come anytime I want. So why don't you take a flight? And I hope it's in coach. <laughs> so stupid. Huh? And I was like, <laughs> at that point, I just like bent down. Like I was, I'm talking to a little kid Yeah. and I'm like, listen, I'm like, other people have been watching what's been going on and they gave me a heads up that you're an asshole. So if multiple people are saying the same thing, Maybe it's a you thing, you know? And he's like, wow, you're a piece of work. I'm like, thank you, you know? But basically, I just got so triggered. And I just, I hate that attitude that even if you don't agree with what someone's asking you or you don't agree with their boundaries, you still respect it. So if I didn't agree and someone asked me like, oh, can you grab your dog? I would would grab him even though I don't agree. 
you know so i just feel like so many people in this world they just like have a disregard of like being in a public space with other people it's not all about you mm. you're comfortable with it other people aren't I ended up saying like your dog's fucking retarded. Like <laughs> I was so fucking pissed. <laughs> and then Pete, oh god, it got bad because Pete, like the the old man, he didn't do anything. So we grab our dog, and his dog is jumping on Pete repeatedly. And then Pete is trying to like shuffle it off, you know. And you know, in the animal world, you use your body, you know. Like at least we do. And I understand people have different. Um, opinions on what's considered like mean or not and then some other guy this must be like my karma or something because you know some other guy came up he's like that guy just kicked the dog <laughs> and he's like I'm gonna kick your ass get out of here and I was just like is it us you know I'm like is this us or is, is, is energy off or something this was right before that big full moon I have no idea what was mm. going on but this guy who's shorter than P is like looking up at him he's like like you kicked him and Pete's like I didn't kick him I'm like I'm shuffling him off because this guy's not you know like is he why yeah all right <laughs> and see to be fair if I genuinely thought someone was hurting another dog you do have permission to call them out and say like hey that's not cool this guy went from zero to 100 I'm gonna fucking kick your ass and I just told I just turn to pee i'm just like listen people can be very protective of their kids and their pets so i'm like you can correct our dogs let other people correct theirs right because if you did feel that someone was like hurting your dog you would get mad right but the way he did it i thought wasn't good not saying the way that i approached that old man was the best but i was just like we need to oh get you did the best you could <laughs> I, shit i would have smacked some head <laughs> i wouldn't be that nice oh god and i just i thought i was fair in that i approached him nicely but as soon as he was dismissive i was like okay we're, shit's going down okay and we eventually left but I was like, how could I have done that better, you know? And I'm like, okay, the name calling, calling someone's dog retarded. I didn't need to do that. The most I could have done, I spoke to my therapist about it. She's like, you can let them know, like, how you feel. Like, hey, you know, I don't, I don't think that's cool. Or can you watch your dog next time? And then you just leave. It doesn't have to become this thing. But everyone in the dog park afterwards, you know, the lady's just like, I don't know what's going on. Like, I'm so sorry. But no one does anything and you see those videos of i'm not saying i need someone to fucking fight with me okay but everyone's always just because it's awkward they don't want to do anything and you see these incidents that happen that are worse like on subways where like people are harassing like asians or like you know punking them or like hitting them and no one does anything and i feel like we've come in to a point in time where i think more people need to step up if they see poor behavior. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people are not equipped with the tools to do it in a healthy way. Yeah. I think because like coming off of like pandemic and everybody's kind of like just lost and disconnected. And then to be honest, most people just don't give a fuck no more. They don't. Yeah. It's just what's the word like con uh, content, uh, contentment or something? Oh, no. contempt. Con Where you think you're it, better? Like looking down on others? No, I guess just uh yeah, never mind. Okay. <laughs> I just woke up. <laughs> but, but but you're right. Like you get I, it. I feel it's gotten worse post pandemic yeah. for sure. But I just it really um it's a reminder of how important good communication skills are. And most people, unless you have good role models, no one knows what the fuck they're doing. You know, I, I've I didn't have good role role models in regards to good communication growing up. My parents are immigrant and naturally they were focused on other things. Okay. And culturally, I think Chinese cultures, they don't really value like emotional well-being. <laughs> like verbally yeah. abusive. That's for weak. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I actively, I, I seek it out. Like, how can I communicate better? Yeah. You know, and just do the best that I can instead of, you know, like, I think there's definitely is a pattern of this shit happening i'm just learning of like how i can navigate it and how i can do better but there's also a, the fact of a lot of people are scared to say or do anything 
because people do have loose screws. People will like flip on a dime and if they have a gun or something like road rage, I will not piss anyone off because you never know. Oh, yeah. You never know what someone's going to do. Yeah. Right. Like if they don't have a good community or a support network, you know, at They'll fucking go grab their gun and, like, yeah, shoot you. exactly. The, the, the best situation is just kind of defuse any, um, don't escalate any anything. Yeah. Don't let your ego get in the way, yes. especially, like, young men out there. Yes. Don't, like, just, this is not a time to prove, oh, I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm the man. I'm like, you're at a fucking you, dog park. Yeah, you just, <laughs> yeah, you need to, chill. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah especially for men an asian guy messaged me recently saying like thanks for talking about the stuff you talk about because i realized like i'm completely the way i was raised i'm completely not equipped with knowing my emotions what's going on with me and a healthy way to handle it and i'm just as a father now starting to learn because that's something i'm learning too yeah. about how how to process all that Anyways, that's my rant for today is, yeah. the, you know, the entitlement. But I know I, I'm i responsible for, for myself. That's it. I'm not, you know, I shouldn't be pointing fingers. Like, look at what everyone else is doing. I'm like, how am I showing up? Am I diffusing? Am I communicating in a way to let people know my boundaries and my values and just leave it as it is? You know, that's all I can do. Oh, uh, what else been going on? I mean, you have been very dedicated to your comedy you always joke that you're lazy and you don't want to work you work very hard on your writing and your comedy yeah i think it's i don't know um i don't know what it is maybe it's just how we brought up or our culture we always we're hardwired to focus in on the things we have not achieved and the things we're not doing enough and the mistakes we've made and that, oh, like, eat you up. And that's, yeah, that's how, like, uh, ev now coming out of it, I actively, it's a battle. God damn, it's a battle every day. I have to be positive and then to not ignore the achievements I've made. Yeah, and then, celebrate the little wins. Yeah, the I little. I think that's a good habit, right? Yeah, and then to kind of separate myself from my work that's hard that's very hard because it's it's almost like a if if I say if a video is not doing as well as I want it to or a set is not doing well um I imagine the bigger laughs it it, it used to oh, set me to depression or the opposite of it like when I do really good yeah, I'm going home driving like I'm God or something. Like I'm having like pure ecstasy moment. It's like, oh, I'm the shit. <laughs> so like, now uh, as I'm doing more, I feel either way is not healthy. Totally. Good or bad is not healthy. You move on, you got to do next day work. And then like how to improve your work is is something i should focus on and not the the result the result is out of my control if i just focusing on the moment of creation then i should be just happy about that so i'm I actively have to remind myself that all the time because i'm not hard i'm not wired to think like that so for people who are you know naturally you know they brought up you know, they were raised with love or something they just it's it's a it's a, a duh it's Auto a common Amer sense American <laughs> like white people privilege you know what I'm <laughs> your parents tell you you're too perfect <laughs> that's a balance though I feel yeah. right now it's a little it's kind of swung the other way yeah a little bit I'm like you're a little you bit think the world revolves around you and a little delusional I'm like I always find it impressive really impressive when someone does mediocre work but they're so confident about it. <laughs> I'm like, because it's so far from like how I was raised. I was like, damn, you're confident and proud of yourself for putting this out. I think it like it sucks. OK, and I get everyone you have to get better. But I'm like, I wish I had some of that. Oh. But, and then my friend turned to me, but she's like, 
I don't know. This video is really bad, though. I don't know if I'd want to be that delusional <laughs> to think that I'm good yeah. with boasting this. Is that Asian excellence? <laughs> yeah, I've uh, definitely uh, worked with uh, people who are just really, really delusional. <laughs> And, and I was like, damn, like, I wish I had that type of confidence. <laughs> It'd be like a mix, like we can mix it up a little bit. But if you don't have talent, wouldn't there be a point where you realize, like, maybe I, maybe this isn't the path for me. Just say they're pursuing comedy, right? Mm, yeah. And I really, you should go for it, you know, if it's your passion. But I mean, it is a skill that you develop. And I think some people naturally have more talent in it as well. But if you genuinely suck, w would someone hit the point and say like, oh, maybe, maybe I'm not good at this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, um, yeah, I try to be, you know, positive with it. Usually th those type of people, they're not mean. They're they're very nice. Absolutely. They're very nice. Um, I haven't, you know, that, yeah, pretty lucky. I haven't uh, encountered any, like, really bad, uh, you know, mean comedians. I uh, heard from, you know, like, back in the days, uh, a lot of, like, male comedians were, like, a really mean or, you know, dicks and just sexist and, and all that. In these these times, these younger generations, not like that. So it's uh, safer for female comedians or you know other gender identities <laughs> <laughs> to like uh, you know do comedy and then not feel uh, yeah uh, harassed, insulted. So I'm like that's that's good. And then for some of those people, I guess they're not that talented. It's it's a way. For, it's a it's a, their therapy so yeah i'm like uh when ew, sometimes i like sh it's not my place to say shit <laughs> oh don't totally. yeah no. this is like this is like huh. a, this is you know free comedy anyways uh, you know what you got loose <laughs> the audience is not paying anything unless they're paying and then i mean you 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 know if you always doing free comedy you know you suck do they <laughs> But it's free comedy, Dude. though, and I'm so <laughs> I'm big on self-awareness. Yeah. But even if you don't have it, like, I feel like if you have a trustworthy group of friends, someone would tell you at some point. And you don't have to say it in a negative way. Like, who are you to tell someone to give up on their dreams? But, like, maybe how you can improve or things to consider. And I think as long as people consider that and live, I think can see things how they are. Not completely delusional. Yeah, but like you, you do need a uh, little bit of delusion yes. to do. It's a balance. Yeah, that's a, being an entertainer. The most successful people are a little bit delusional. You have to be. You have to think outside the box. Elon Musk, mm. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking bitches from left to right. Oh <laughs> he has a fetish. I like. Like him and uh, what's his name from uh, Wild and Out? Nick yeah, Cannon. Uh, Nick Cannon. Nick yeah, Cannon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they have oh, they the same spread, fetish. Yeah, spread their seed. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah they have the same fetish. <laughs> <laughs> That's so gross. Uh, did you see Al Pacino just had a oh. baby with a twenty nine year old? Have you seen photos of them together? No. He looks like The Walking Dead. <laughs> She's 29, Jeez. and I'm just imagining, can you imagine kissing him? You know when people get older, <laughs> your breath smells like death, right? Because your gums yeah. and teeth start rotting. Yeah. She just had a baby, and I think <laughs> I saw on a news headline that she just filed for full custody of the kid. The whole, I mean, what do you expect? You know, but, yeah. but I saw a photo of her and her mom, and her mom looks like she could be Al Pacino's daughter. daughter yeah. right? So I'm like, what's your mom thinking? Or is she the type that's like, hey, get it. Go get, yeah. get it. You'd be surprised. You know, we'll be good. A lot of, their, uh, yeah, a lot of mothers pimp their daughters out. Yeah. Kardashian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then uh, our Kelly's, uh, two, the two girls in um that documentary they're, they're yeah their parents kind of pimped them out yeah that's so sad 
I'm not even a parent, but I would think, wouldn't you look out for the safety of your kid? Wouldn't that be your priority? You would think, but right? yeah, just all kinds of different people out there. It just, <laughs> I just can't imagine someone's headspace that it wouldn't matter to them. Mm-hmm. Some, something that I talk about a lot is, you know, when older people date significantly younger and I get a lot of pushback, mostly from men who are like, you're just bitter and you're old. Uh, 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 but I like to flip it on that. I'm like, hey, if and when you ever have a daughter and she brings a guy home mm-hmm. and he's your age or closer to your age, are you going to think it's a fantastic decision? Are you going to high five him? Like, yeah, bro. You you know, you might be like, mm, OK, you, like, is there an ounce of you that has the protective gene that you want to protect your daughter and that may be because I have that I have a lot of that that I wonder some people I guess they don't how do you feel about it like do you find it Um, worrisome when someone who's older dates someone significantly younger like 18 to like mid-20s I would say is you're still kind of developing yeah yeah definitely I mean hmm. Eh, I have, I have, yeah, I have, uh, I don't really have a strong opinion. It just as, like, it feels like, uh, I wouldn't, uh, if I had a daughter, I wouldn't, but, uh, shit, I'm losing my mind a little bit. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna come back to it. It's, it's um, early. It's yeah, early. it's early. Um, if I might be honest, none of my business, to be honest. I look at it as I go, oh, that's just men. <laughs> it's, I mean, it is biology, you know, that I think both men and women, if we got to choose like physically what we're attracted to, even women, you think if between a guy who's older, most men, when you get a, around above 40, like your dick's not as hard. You start losing your hair and stuff compared to someone's younger. <laughs> maybe they're, you know, they yeah. work out and you know that they're like fucking you all night, you know, or they could fuck you all night. Yeah. You know, like naturally we're attracted to what's healthy and what can we deem can like procreate. Right. Mm-hmm. So I get that. But being a conscious human being about it. Mm hmm. Um, and, yeah. and it it comes to every situation is different. I'm not putting a blanket statement yeah. on everyone. And it is none of my business. I just, for young women, I think because I've been in that place before where I felt taken advantage of where I didn't know my boundaries well. And I, and the guy didn't consider that. He was just, what's in it for me? Mm. You know, and there are some older men that can be very thoughtful and caring about it saying like, Oh, okay, she's still figuring things out. Like this might not be the best situation, but it's an imbalance of power dynamics. It could be. So if someone takes advantage of that, I get very sensitive. Yeah, that, yeah, that's true. That one aspect, if, if it just, you know, fun and all that, or she knows, oh, this is like a transaction. Yes. Then yeah, I've definitely had a friend who, uh, knew what the fuck she was doing and oh, she yeah. needed money oh, so yeah. i'm like okay you know if you're all you're mature about it the thing is like when that power dynamic is different and then he's fully taking advantage of that and then she's she thinks she's in love yes so that yeah that's a uh, that's kind of trippy but for men like yeah uh we, you know we'll talk about oh uh, what about you know older women they you know a lot younger dudes I mean, that's just the world, you know, it's there's it, not really gender equality when it comes to sex or all that. It's just men and women just kind of, by you know, build differently in biology. And men can separate sex from emotions. Women just not necessarily have that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure they're... Uh, small percentage of women out there they can but majority of women can't separate that you know it's like uh that saying oh to men's heart is through his stomach to woman's heart is through her vagina <laughs> i have not heard of that saying. No? Really? have you heard of that saying <laughs> <laughs> is that a chinese saying <laughs> no, I've, heard <laughs> I've heard it somewhere <laughs> 
once yeah once yeah because uh, that's why like a friends and benefit usually end up in women break uh, that like heartbreaking totally i just the way it is oh, so totally. i've been there yeah before. i'm like oh no we're just friends yeah and i wanted more or i developed yeah because because the, the hormones uh i've, I've uh, listened to a podcast about that too they explained it in uh science <laughs> so like hormones when we have sex uh we like we just release more like uh oxytocin or some shit i'm pretty totally just making shit up but like a different uh hormone than uh man just doper me it's like a quick pleasure and with uh the added hormone for us it's it's it it's a love hormone so when we, when we have like an intimate bounding, we we get confused. We think that's love, that but without that, we can't come. So like to for order uh, in order for us to enjoy sex, we release that hormone that think we're in love. Mm. So that's just uh, that's why like women tend to have heartbreaks in you know friends and benefit or you know poly relationships and all that. And then we tend to be possessive and, I guess, make us jealous or something. So it's that type of hormones. So you really can't fuck like a man. You really just can't. Yeah. With Polly, though, I feel like a lot of guys, Ooh, they God. say they're okay with that and it's ideal for them. Oh, they just want to fuck bitches. Yeah. That's an excuse. <laughs> I, I listened to a podcast. Do you know who Aubrey Marcus is? No. It's like a spiritual entrepreneur guy. He was in a poly relationship for years. Of course. Yeah. And he said <laughs> that it was the biggest learning lesson for him because, of course, like most men who sign up for it, they're like, oh, cool. But he said the rage that he felt knowing that his partner went off and was with some other guy. And he said there was one in particular that was pretty rough with her in bed and he knew this because of the bruising and the physical marks and i guess she liked did she like <laughs> yeah yeah so i guess she liked that's my it. question yeah did she consent though and, yeah and that's the thing is that she liked it and okay he, but he said the rage he felt when he saw that mm. and he either had a coach or a therapist and he said listen if you're in this poly relationship she's submitting to the guy you have to submit to him too yeah, and he realized, like, what the fuck am I doing? This doesn't work for me. So I feel like men, a lot of times, it doesn't click for them until they're put it in happens. a situation. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you fucking idiot. Like, what do you, mm -hmm. what do you expect? I, I think even that is more of ego. Like, the possessive uh, ego in men. It's not necessarily that he is so in love with her. It's just the thought of uh, some man could do this to your property it's more, I think it triggers more in that ego stage than, oh, he's really wanted to be a monogamist. I think you're right. Since we're catching up is something that I've realized recently. With everything that I'm doing, I'm really thinking about why am I doing it? And do I truly want to be doing this? Or is it something mm -hmm. I think I have to do? For example... We bought a house a couple years ago. And as you know, as a homeowner, things come up. And so I'm like home. The window washers are coming. I'm getting a quote to redo our floors. And I've learned through this whole process that anything that involves managing a home or being like a housewife, I, I truly hate it. I truly hate it. I am not wired to enjoy that kind of responsibility so it's good i have that clarity so i was telling pete hey like we need to come up with a solution either we hire someone to property help. manager totally i get why people have house managers now or we can like move or you know do something like that but there needs to be a solution because i it puts me in a horrible mood and i hate doing it so that's that's something that i've been thinking about because i think a lot of us are on autopilot like oh yeah i'm supposed to be working and you know focus on achievements and buy a house it's better and do all this but like you said earlier you think you're on your deathbed i'm like why are we spending time doing these things yes some things you have as a responsible adult 
living in the U.S., we have to do, right, pay our taxes, do our things and stuff like that. <laughs> but I've really been evaluating how I'm spending my time and and why. Like, why am I doing this? Instead of being on autopilot. Oh, is it? Oh, he likes coffee. coffee. He likes oh, coffee. He, uh, <laughs> for real? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I don't think it's good for him. That's a that's not coffee. That's Vietnamese coffee. He's gonna be bouncing. <laughs> he's gonna be like balls. acting like he's on meth <laughs> after just one lick. Come here, come get your ass up here. Uh, uh, this is Bobo. He okay. He doesn't care. He just wants. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs>